Okay, hey, this meeting is being recorded. And uh, pretty excited to have everybody. This is the first Lighthouse session where we're going to talk to very interesting people that are fascinating in how they think and what they have to share. And to kick off this whole series, we have Eleanor Koenig. Uh, Eleanor, how are you doing? I am very happy that this many people are showing up to watch me learn about stuff and poke at plugins. Yeah, this is exciting. Uh, I was saying before the recording, we were capped out at 100 people. I thought we were able to go to 500. The Zoom setting didn't work out. My apologies if you're just watching the recording. We're going to try to upgrade behind the scenes, but I'm not sure if that's going to be solve the problem while we're live, but um, we'll see. And Eleanor, so where should we get going? We're talking PKM. There's so many areas. We always have fun talking. So I, I feel like my like my role in our relationship is that I find weird new things that pop out of the Obsidian Discord and I share them with people. Like that's that's the whole point of the roundup, right? Is that I keep up with all of the new fangled cutting edge stuff. And the thing that I have been loving these last couple of, I don't know, weeks since we last talked is I have the quick add plugin, which is like it started out as a templater script and like, you know, JavaScript is hard, right? Like JavaScript is hard for people who like me don't know a ton about programming. But Christian uh, very helpfully uh, made this plugin that is a little bit more of a graphical GUI user-friendly kind of templating thing that lets you use macros. And uh, he solved the problem that I have been having since basically day one of Obsidian, where I want to have all of my, um, I want to have all of my like literature source notes in one file, all of those annotations that were pulled in from Zotero and with empty notes and everything. And I wanted to have all of them in one file, but I also wanted to have atomic zettles. And what a lot of people have historically done is they use note refractor to take their source note and split it off into individual notes. But then you lose the beauty of the source note where you can just go through everything chronologically. And I know that there's the whole Zettel Costin thing where you know you shouldn't have it like that. And really you just want the atomic little note cards. And I, I get that, but I don't like that. So quick add is the opposite. Well, quick add is a lot of things, but the the Zettel, the Zettelizer like macro that Christian helped me make. That's a lot that Christian made for me. Um, it, and I'll show it to you in a second. It, instead of pulling everything out and spitting it over into individual notes, it makes individual notes that embed the sections. And I know that that's like hard to picture, which is why I asked Nick to let me come in and do this because it's so much easier to see it when you like can poke it. So let me figure out screen sharing. Uh, I think it's this button. And I think it's this button. And theoretically, you can see my vault now. Yes, we can. Awesome. OK. So here are basically two source notes from, I should switch these. These are two source notes from the Zotero empty notes thing that I showed Nick last time we talked. And if you look on the left, this is a raw dump of a file that I read like yesterday. This is. I, I changed one thing and I was like, wait, no, I should pause so I can show people what it looks like before I touch it. Uh, so it's just quotes and page numbers. There's like not a ton here. This is what it looks like when it gets into my vault if I'm reading something quickly and know that I don't need to write an annotation every time because I'm writing my newsletter or I'm working on an article and I don't have time to go through the whole flow. I'm just like finding the quotes I need and making sure that I save them. And then when I'm done with that, I kick them over into my vault into my zot dumps folder, which is just a bunch of stuff that I haven't fully processed yet. And then I go through, and I've shown this before, where I'll like look at the quote and see what the point of it is. And it looks like they used horses as beast of burden. Sheeps were used for meat and secondarily wool fiber. There's a bunch here. So I will probably split this off into a couple of different things. But rather than waste our time doing that, I'm going to switch over to this file where I've already done that. So you can see here, I have the page number that it came from and my like short titles at all, which somebody in the Discord actually called the Koenig method and I like almost died. So this is a thing that apparently I pioneered in the community. So I don't know, I'm a little proud of it. But um, the idea is that I have this short title 
where I summarize the important stuff and then I can talk more about why it's important and why I care about it. Like this thing that happened in the 50s BC is weirdly similar to the modern American politics filibuster stuff happening right now. Uh, so I, I found that interesting and wrote it down. And I have a whole bunch of stuff like that. And then I can, and I'm, I hope I do this right, because I don't do this very often, but I can run the Zettelizer through the command palette with control P, can run quick add, there's probably a fast, there is actually a faster way to do this, but I'm like not very good at hotkeys. So I like to do it the, make sure I'm doing it correctly every step way. So I type in quick add into the command palette and then I run quick add. And then this JavaScript is, um, I, I told quick add where to find this JavaScript thing that Christian gave me. And then when I click it, a whole bunch of new Zettles appear theoretically in, do you see it? Like this wasn't here before. This okay. file we just got created and the Romans wound up banning sky watching is down here. So it turned all of these, it didn't get rid of them. It didn't move them. It turned them into embedded zettles. Wow. Isn't that cool? It's pretty cool. So now, like, yeah, I don't have a ton of independent thought here yet, but every time I come back and find something that's on this topic, instead of dumping it in here or making a whole new zettel, I can like add it to this file. That's my like overarching note about Romans banning sky watching and all of the like politics around that. But Interesting. So and and that uh, keep that open please if you can um sure. the romans wound up banning sky watching so and the note on the left that's the source and uh you did the magic quick add we it exploded all of the header threes into new notes but it, it also links back to that uh source note right yeah so um here you'll probably enjoy this graph how do i uh, i like want to open it up here oh sorry hang on I'm actually really terrible at hotkeys and stuff. So if I can find my, they were color coded. Why aren't they color coded still? Uh, oh, because I changed the number. I made my vault flatter. My my zip my slip box. I made it flatter. You're you're slowly bringing me over into one slip box folder, ever so slowly. I changed the number when I deleted a couple of folders. So my zettles are red. And my newsletter stuff, we don't need this right now. My zettles are red. And then my source notes are in what folder is that? That's 43, 43, folder 43. Note how easy the Johnny Decimal thing makes that, by the way. So you can see how these source notes go with the zettles that got created. And then I reference them in other, pa in other places. So this mm -hmm. is one of my MOCs, that's not relevant. And it's just like, you can kind of see yeah. 42 is the zettles. So this is pretty cool. So you're just talking it out, the path. So you're searching, well, you're filtering when you do path colon and 42 is because your folder is called 42 zettle or whatever. And it's seen that and now you can color those. So this is really cool between, you know, your, your source note material and the zettles to see because the source note will act sort of like um, a hub or a map of content. And then the Zettles should kind of hover around each hub in theory, or at least many of them. Okay, let me see if I can bring, there we go. I want to forget the local graph. It'll be easier to see on the local graph. All right, so then if I filter this to depth two, you should be able to get a sense of kind of how there's like all of these little hubs. It makes it so much easier to look at the file and see how much stuff I got out of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And then this other cool thing that QuickAd does is it makes an outline for it. I always move it to the top, but I didn't want to bother Christian anymore and ask him to move it to here. So I can do that by myself. <laughs> and then- very, very interesting here. Hang on. I made fake 
admonition in CSS because I don't like using code blocks. So it looks pretty now. This is some nerd talk, everyone. So um... okay, so now you should be able to actually see stuff. So um, I. I don't know, I, I added some CSS to, to make the outline a little bit prettier. But now whenever I look at the file, I don't have to scroll down or use the outline thing to look at what my like top level thoughts were. I can just look at the top of the file and be like, ah, yes, this one I learned about abusing um, prophecies and how prophecies were politicized in the Roman Empire and use that can you when I'm writing my newsletter. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm actually feeling a little slow right now. So can you zoom, uh, take us back one moment. So yes. on the bottom is more of the source note and on the top is one of the related Zettles yes. within the source. Okay. Yes. And I can open more of them to, for context. Okay. And these are all coming from that source note below. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you look at it, the title, the Romans wound up banning sky watching, they banned sky watching. So these are all the little okay. atomic notes, nice but time. I didn't, break my source note. And then yep. as I go, I can come, I can have a map of content where I'm like, all right, I learned, you know, I have this, this, let's say I have this overarching thing about politicians changing rules based on misuse, right? Like if I have that, I don't have that yet. I'm going to have to go back to this video and take notes on the things I'm about to say, but Let's say hypothetically that I want to have a note about, or an article or a newsletter or something, an analysis piece about politicians changing the rules based on misuse of something. And then I'll go, and instead of linking to this heading, I'll link to these zettles because if I change the title, they're not fragile anymore and they won't break because Obsidian auto updates. If you change which title? If I change the title of the file. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if I change the title of the heading, it'll break. That's right. So it, it oh, okay. solved all nice. of those, like, how to make your source notes atomic without losing your source note problems that I was having for, like, I mean, I, I debated back and forth with Dave Cat about this. Like, we it was like, oh, I, I understand why you're doing atomic notes, but I really, I really don't want to, like, I don't want to lose all of it. And then Christian made it so easy, <laughs> just, just so, so easy. So now you have the value the value of atomic notes, but you get to keep the conic method, right? Yeah. With, with using the headers too. Okay. So my next question would be, if I, I hope I'm not interrupting your flow, is on one of those zettles, one of the top two there, how do you then add your commentary or do you to that note? Because th those are embedded. I think it was Luke in the comments who said that you're transcluding or embedding this. And that's what yeah. we can see in edit mode. So do you just add comments below or what's your flow after? So this is okay. So this would make a good. Um, so look, I, I I just had you just heard me have all of those thoughts. This would make a good article idea or something. Compiling a bunch of different examples of how. What did I say? Of how politicians change rules based on things that actually happen and abuse. And then I'm like, oh, that reminds me, hard cases make bad law. That's something I learned in law school. It should be a zettle of its own. Hmm. Remember the, okay, so um, I don't know how many of you guys are American or know weird stuff about American law, but there was a case, um, American case law about um, like how much you have to maintain your house property, property maintenance, mm -hmm. where a little kid got hurt and it was because the property wasn't maintained, but they were trespassing. Like a little kid got hurt. So the judge felt bad and was like, even though you were trespassing, we're going to make the property owner pay for all of your medical bills because they didn't maintain their fence on the land where they had a whole bunch of keep out signs. Hard okay. cases make bad law. That should be a zone. Hard cases. Okay. Yeah. Like difficult, yeah. emotionally difficult cases make bad law. It's one of the things that makes the Supreme Court like so weird um, in America is that 
the justices are trying very hard to not actually pay any attention to the ramifications of their decisions. Like they're supposed mm-hmm. to, like, like mo- leaving aside all of the modern politics, blah, 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 but like the sort of platonic ideal of the Supreme Court is that they're supposed to just apply the law and not feel bad for people, which is kind of the opposite of how like common law is supposed to work. Mm-hmm. Leaving all of that aside, the idea is that difficult, bad things going wrong makes for like weird implications like you're required to maintain your property and pay the bills of somebody who robs you (laughs) because of that case there was another case where somebody was trying to break into someone's house and fell through the roof or fell through the floor or fell through the stairs i don't remember but they got hurt robbing someone and the homeowner was required to pay for their medical bills Mm. <laughs> That's crazy, right? Yeah, so hard true. cases make bad law is something that I vaguely remember from law school 10 years ago, but it should probably be a zettle, which goes into my root. I've been using my root as an inbox. I know this doesn't work for a lot of people, but I'm the kind of person who, if you put something on my desk, I, I will put it away, right? Like I, I will organize it Don't put it in a folder that says inbox. I will never look at that folder. Don't put it neatly on my, I'm, you can't see it, but I'm looking at my like little file sorter thing that I use with my students that's home because I haven't been working. Like, except for at work where I have a very different system. And even then kids should put it on my desk or I'm never going to find it unless they know where it lives for sure. And they never do Mm -hmm. put it on my desk and I'll put it away. Cause I'm like a very like organized neat foldery kind of person so if it's yeah. in my root it will like itch at me until i put it away <laughs> you know i i kind of work in that same way actually where um on my root that's where any new note will go and it's not like i have to file it because i'm just going to put it in the same exact folder like uh, 99 times out of 100 um which i call umami which is like the full mouth feel like that hidden sense because it's vague enough that anything can go there like where, where most people call zettles or or that but i just like to see it one more time before i put it there that's the only reason i do the inbox method just because i can see quickly all that stuff from the past week or the past month because sometimes i'm quite lazy and and i'll I'll wait that whole time and then i'll just kind of scroll through like oh what were all these notes i made and then i'll just plop them in you know one folder but at least i get one more touch just one more touch to kind of solidify some of those notes before they get lost or before i you know maybe i wanted to do something but i don't need to process them for my use cases but yeah anyways keep going sorry i got distracted and i was um i was totally listening to you because you're right that's a good system but i was like oh no i actually want to organize this display because it was in my root and bothering me so what i'm gonna say here is misuse of law makes people change laws that's a claim i made a claim Good job, me. So I'll use that somewhere, probably. And then I'm going to sort it, because even though I'm live on camera, it's bothering me. (laughs) Is this a peek into your Johnny Decimal filing system? So now it's neatly put away. I bet you will have some questions on on your (laughs) folder filing system, but we'll, we'll save those for a little later. And then the other nice thing that QuickAd does is let's say that I have put together this very neat window of like, I'm doing stuff here, right? Like there, this is my notes on a topic. And let's say hypothetically, <clears throat> hypothetically, my husband pops into my office and says, hey, Eleanor, uh, don't forget to update the DNS servers for your thing so that everything doesn't break when you're doing your presentation. And I'm like, oh yeah, I should, I should make a note about that but I don't want to open any other files because my workspace is the way I like it. I can hit control Q and take a note about, let's say unrelatedly, hmm, that's something smart that I said recently. Oh, I want to, yeah, add to, okay, add to note. Okay, so don't forget for hard cases make bad law to include the part about the thief hurting themselves and having, see Christian, I do use this all the time, hurting themselves and having to have the homeowner pay the bills. Notice I made a typo, I don't care. 
I also feel like people not in America are probably like, why would anybody have to pay that bill? But whatever, America's weird. So, so, so what just happened again? You used I, quick ad? I just used this little quick pop-up modal to take a note. This is part, without, this is part of quick. What's this a part I'm pretty of quick sure. ad? I'm pretty sure okay. it's part of quick ad. It, Murph might have made this for me, but I think it's quick ad. I, quick ad can definitely do this. I, I made it roughly around the time that quick ad was like sort of first okay. becoming a thing. So I, you type, I, I you type something. Where did, where did it go? Where did it go? So it went to my root, not okay, this. Gotcha. It went here to my root a new note. Gotcha. as like a thing. And like, this is a to-do list. And eventually I can extract that into my daily note, which is 202107. We'll make a new one. I'm not going to actually do this, but like I could put it into the bottom of a note using note refractor, but I have private personal stuff in my notes, so I'm not going to do that right now. But the idea is that I can I can take care of it when I'm ready to take care of it without Very messing nice. up my like system, because sometimes I'll have a text editor in one window and all of my notes for an article I'm writing on the other window. And then I'll have a thought that has nothing to do with anything that's on my screen. And I don't mm -hmm. want to add more windows because yeah. there's like some kind of hotkey foo that you can do where you can like open a, a new window exactly where you want it. And I'm very bad at that. Hotkey foo. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So <laughs> exploring PKM, uh, nonfiction studies, fiction writing, creative inspiration. Um, we're kind of touching lightly on all these at the same time, but I'm just trying to see if there's anything that we wanted to hit on, especially. So, I mean, I guess just to kind of give an overview of how I go from, I have on this before, but I, I go from this to storytelling. I've talked about how I go from this to an article, right? But with stories, what I'll often do is I'll have a note um, here. Here's one I was working on like this week chestnuts chestnuts no that's not right okay. and i'm reaching so here's a story a vault um in the chat so people have that yeah you guys can go poke this too um and we'll stop and move to questions in a minute but this is a story i wrote and it involved chestnuts also welcome to the sneak peek of the stuff that i'm literally shipping with my newsletter tomorrow. So this is a record of a tweet storm that Sarah Tabor did about chestnuts. And I don't know how much you guys know about the history of the American chestnut and how it was basically made not extinct. Many. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's interesting though. Um, so basically the American chestnut basically went extinct because of an imported fungus from um, East Asia. And it turns out that the chestnut was actually vitally important to the Appalachian mountain region. And like it, chestnuts are food, the wood's really great, the trees are important for a lot of different species. And it basically economically devastated a fairly large chunk of the American East. And this is a very small detail in the story that I wrote. Um, but like I included it very purposefully and hang on, I really look forward to the day that we get better YAML handling. So this is a newsletter that I wrote about mythological cats unrelated to the chestnut in so far, except in so far as all of this research went into the, me writing this story. So I am keeping track using the breadcrumbs plugin, which is cool. I think Ross made this. It's cool. I haven't fully started us utilizing it, but it's helpful. But it, it helps me keep track of which notes go with which story, because we were talking about like what inspires my stories. So I have all of this research. And when I sit down to tell a story, it all becomes like fodder in my brain. And then I put together the American chestnut and agriculture budgeting and the, the struggles of the Appalachian region with, you know, mythological cats. And hmm. then I come up with a story that I, I think is good. And um, 
I, I have this analysis piece and you know what's hilarious? I actually don't even remember what it's called because I already, like I didn't ship it, but I scheduled it. So let me find it. It should be in here somewhere. You know what I can just do? This is the sort of thing that I write um, for my newsletter, which is launching today. Well, this part of it's launching today. The, all of the like summary stuff I've been doing for like a year, but I'm, I'm launching this can new I, can I show the feature. Link? Yeah, 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 please. Um, so I'm launching this new feature where I write analysis of all of the research and cool nerdy stuff that went into the story because I had this epiphany hanging out with people in the discord that that there's this whole like there's this picture that gets shared around on writer twitter where like here's the iceberg and readers only care about the tip of the iceberg for your world building but you need to do the research for all of the underlying stuff but you should only include the top stuff I was like wait no actually the research is pretty interesting like people seem to be willing to sign up for the, the little summaries of what I'm researching like maybe people will also be interested in the behind the scenes of why I wrote the story. So I guess this is the grand nice. experiment to see if you guys are interested in the like I'm behind interested. the scenes of and, why and I, I wrote the story and the cool nerdy facts about chestnut trees and you know weird folklore. Many of us will be interested <laughs> in chestnuts guarantee you. But you no know, but more to your point there is something fascinating about our interest like art used to just be this finalized product um, and you just look at it like a, a painting, but now it's like the story behind the story, the behind the scenes, how it was done. All these things give us this, uh, I'm going to use it again, that word umami, um, to kind of give us this fuller experience. And um, I think, you know, it's a shared human experience. Behind the scenes counts too. So that's kind of cool that you're doing this. This is the child note for, see, I, I was literally working on this last night. So I didn't finish doing the breadcrumb stuff. So this is how the breadcrumb thing works. You give it, you tell it whether something is a parent, sibling, or child. And this is the child note for the cat and wolf story, right? I wrote it after I finished the story. So theoretically, hmm, maybe I messed something up. I haven't used this much. Don't, yeah. don't judge me, <laughs> but I'm very excited about it, field name. It says child. Oh, maybe because it's capital. Yaml's real finicky. I don't know. I'll figure it out later. But the general yeah. idea is that now I'm able to better keep track of like what things go with what. So if we go to terminal. There we go. Okay. So it's for some reason an implied connection instead of the thing. Probably because oh, it's that's... not actually physically in this YAML. So it'll pick up the stuff. It's like backlinks, but more targeted. Does that make sense? A little. I was just expecting it to say parent and then boom, but it's giving real or implied. That's interesting. It's because this act, this YAML actually says it, and it's. I think I, maybe Ross is here. I don't know, but um, it's picking up that it's not literally in the YAML. It's not a specific oh. relationship, but because I oh. assigned it in this other thing. Can you go back to the one you were just on? Yep. I just want to see how, how it compares to the uh, linked mes mentions below. And it looks like an unlinked message. Anyways, something to dive deep into. But I think yeah. there, there are definitely use cases for that, adding very specific uh, metadata to show connections um, with more context to them. There's definitely a, a lot going on there. So kind of a Folga, Folga Zettel approach. That's the idea. I'm, I don't know that I'm like, doing it right. But I, I like the idea of more structured kinds of connections, not for the middle of my slip box, like the middle of the slip box should be a, a delightful spaghetti mess. But these very specific workflows that I have of here's my research, here's the notes, here's the story, here's the analysis piece, here's the newsletters, like they're, I mean, I realize that they're all newsletters now, but in my head that like Monday morning, very structured, like the, um, this thing. This is more what I mean when I say like the newsletter like this. It's a very they're all this format of a couple fun facts and it's like a bit of a deep dive, but not not like a long form analysis piece. So like all of those connect in a very specific way. And I wanted to have something a little bit stronger than than the links and the backlinks and the graph to show me that very strong connection. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Ross.
they're great. Cool. So where does this take us? Let's see. I think examples. the Q and A. I feel like people probably have questions. We have a few questions, um, <laughs> and then I just open the door for more questions. So we'll kind of see. Can <laughs> um, what is the conic method? Um, I, <laughs> I feel weird saying it like that, but somebody else did it first. <laughs> The coding method is basically this source note thing that I do, and I, I'm sure other people do it too, but um, I did it with Nick when we figured out the, like, so Zettelkasten has this idea that your source notes should just refer back to the text, which makes a ton of sense if you still have the text in front of you, but a lot of the time, one, my search does not index PDFs, and I want to actually search the knowledge that I have pulled. Um, and two, a lot of the times I'm working from a from a paperback library book. Like I, I still work with like dead tree books, and I have to give those back. So I can't just say, oh, this is the note, go refer to the text. Like I don't have an academic library right next to me like Lemon did. I, like mine is, I have to order it. So what I do is, this thing what was a truckler where this does not come from the actual PDF. Like they come like this. And then part of my process is instead of making the Zettel as the text of a file, I kind of make it the header because it's easier for me to see the content there. And on rare occasions, I will add notes to self or some further context like this and this is how I take notes. It's a, it's a more academic workflow than a proper proper is the wrong word than a Zettelkasten personal knowledge management your own independent thought kind of thing because I, like my, my those five hundred word articles and my synthesized longer articles and my story like that like it's not like I'm not synthesizing things into my own words. I just don't want to lose these source notes. Yeah. So I organize mm -hmm. them that way and it kind of organize them in a VLN, a very long note, right? <laughs> and then and then from there, you can pull them out. Here, here's a related question. How often are you using the Zettelizer for a so source note? Is it just once? Because if you do it more than once, will you end up with duplicate files, duplicate files if you break out atomic notes more than once? That's a great question. I only do it once. Um, my, my flow is once I pull it in, I have this Zot dumps thing. And then once I am done processing these, I like I, I'm done processing it. And anything that I go back and add, I can do manually. Like the settleizer is to save me time. It's not the only way to do it. Okay. It's just you, you're automating when you're doing a whole file because you don't need to automate if you're not doing a whole file. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you make your your 20 or so, whatever it is, 100 headers, yeah. heading three, and then you zettelize once. Yeah, and, and some of these files are longer than others. Like okay. I have, I, I was working on this one last night because city walls is the upcoming topic for the newsletter. And I, like, I don't have time to do it when I'm trying to prepare for two newsletter articles. And also my kid is sick and also I have this mm. Zoom planned. So <laughs> I just didn't have time to do it right. I'll fix it later. So much, so much. What theme are you using? I think it was answered in the chat, but um, if you just want to say that. Oh, uh, so I use Palatinate, um, which is sort of, I rolled my own. I pulled snippets from a bunch of different places and then eventually put it all together because people kept asking. Um, other great themes are yin and yang, um, which I use on mobile. And um, I can't remember, I don't know why I can't remember the name of the one that I like that SLRVB made, oh my God. Oh yeah. Uh, um, Spectrum and ITS theme are also like really nice, but I, I have so many little like things that really matter to me that I just made my own, which is again, kind of how I wound up in the land of not using managed hosting and rolling my own servers because sometimes I just want to poke it. Yeah. I have a no programming background, but I've dabbled in CSS and that's, it's almost like a gateway drug. I think if you start with CSS, <laughs> then, you know, you're like, I want to design my theme and, and next thing you know, you're. You're getting involved in other things like YAML and, and that yeah. uh, sort of thing. I, I do want to say, though, uh, your theme was used yesterday in one of the, the light workshop uh, showcases by Anya. Very cool to see, uh, fellow writer. So 
um, that maybe there's something with uh, the novelists, the writers who are interested in, in your theme. I don't know. It's got a lot of heavy stuff for that. How do you get the quotes for pages as shown? I'm not, I'm assuming that's as we're seeing it right now, for example. So it's kind of, like, yeah, that's custom to your theme. Is that the vision, like the quotation mark? Things. Yeah, yeah, that's part yeah. of Palatinate. Okay. You can, it's public. You can, somebody will probably share you a link to the GitHub. I'm, I'm counting on you guys. Somebody give them a link to the GitHub. Do you do all your writing in Obsidian or when do you use Word? That's a great question. Um, I use Word for outlets that require me to submit things in Word. So I use the Pandoc plugin for that, which is super helpful. Um, so like Sifla wants things in Word, Tor is perfectly happy to let me slap it into their WordPress, which is nice. But um, a couple places want it as a standard manuscript format thing. Um, so I use Word for post-processing. I do all of my actual writing in Markdown, depending on my mood or muscle memory at the time, I will use either WriteMonkey 2 or Typora when I split screen. So if I have my vault with like 7,000 notes open and it's like all my notes, long form writing in Obsidian on my relatively small screen is difficult with all of that. So I'll use um, a different editor like on my left hand screen and then I'll have my notes on the right hand screen because then I don't know, like the hotkey thing. I like, I like, I like writing long form stuff in Obsidian just fine as long as I'm not using a bunch of reference notes. So if I'm actively querying my vault for stuff, I will write in either Write Monkey or um, Typora. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Next question. I have a lot coming up. What is your text formatting caps versus non capped methodology? In what regard? Um, I don't know. Are, are there some times where you're using all caps, perhaps? Um, maybe there are some file names that are like that. If so, it's probably from Zotero. If you give me the actual example, I can tell you. Um, okay, we'll see if that we'll see if that comes in the chat. Probably just the default name of the PDF that I didn't fix. I usually try to uh, fix it. I usually don't like all caps. So we'll come back to the questions in a moment. I do want to say you you have the Obsidian Publish. I do. Right? Okay. Yeah. And we've been sharing it in, in the chat every now and then. But it, I mean, you just put that out there. So would you like to talk about that? I mean, it's my fault. <laughs> like, I just, uh, I thought, hang on, let me bring it up. Um, screen share but, is awful. But it's I mean, the same like, uh, so the reason I that mean I shared it. sharing, it's, it's pretty cool. A lot of people ask me questions in Discord and it, I'll be like, oh, here, let me send you a screenshot. But it's not, the same like it's not it's not as easy to to share information that way because you can't get all of the information on one screen and um thanks to the kind and generous donations of for people helping me with the server hosting of um of City and roundup which i deeply appreciate because it's a lot of work um i decided that it would make sense to just go ahead and get published which uh, I know that you like, I don't know, you, you can do it for free, but not easily. And I, after spending the last two, too many days fighting with servers for Ghost, I just wanted to pay somebody to do it for me. So thanks Lee Cat and Silver for making it a one click button. <laughs> but basically mm -hmm. I just wanted to, to be able to more easily answer questions for people because, you know, people want to know stuff and they want, you know, answers. And it's a lot easier to give an answer about something if I can give them a link and let them yeah, figure it out. No, I think it's a, it's kind of it's kind of um, it's you're almost self adulating yourself when you send a link to your public vault. I, I mean, I've done this, but it's also a really good way to give someone an answer because you're like, I've given this a lot of thought. Here's what I've written about it. Here's a link, and boom, it's there. But you've gone a step further, and you're not mentioning it, but you should. Like this can be downloadable. Am I right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, I think it's on the welcome page, but uh, I feel I feel a little bad about this, actually. But if you want to download the actual like zip file of my vault, uh, you can, but I'm, I'm charging $2 for it just to have a paywall because I don't want Google to crawl it. Because it, it has, um, so the version that I'm sharing on my website, the zip file has uh, like the, the article seeds and some of my stories. And 
like I'm very willing to help people for free, but kind of my dream has always been to be a like a professional writer and I don't want to lose my like first publication rights and stuff. So uh, you're welcome to to buy my two dollar vault, which I don't know, like I like to think that that's not an outrageous price. <laughs> but, uh, is, but yeah, so if you want to like an actually. Price. Yeah, if you want to go poke the actual YAML and mess around with the plugins, I, I had to remove some of the plugins because I wasn't sure if they came with like access to my personal Amazon account. <laughs> so if you find anything that looks like it maybe shouldn't be there, please just tell me. Uh, Koala um, and Leah, two other other mods, spent like an hour helping me find all of the places where I had accidentally left in my phone number <laughs> um, and like my kid's name. So I'm a little nervous about this actually, but uh, you know, enough people ask me questions about it that I, I thought that if there was an example they could they could poke just like your light kit, but not as sort of oriented towards teaching me how teaching people how to note take. Like that is yeah. you are much better at that than I am. But if you want to poke yeah. sort of an active vault, you you can. I just feel like a lot of the stuff online is great, like your light kit, but uh, not always a working example. So yeah. the teacher in me just kind of wanted to share a working example if if people wanted to to go poke what it looks like I mean, for real. It's an incredible, incredible resource that you're, you're pro providing there. I will be poking around. I will be getting lost in the maze, poking against all the walls and seeing what doors open. Um, we're going to kill two birds with one stone in, in the next question. Which parts of your vault do you keep private? And could you show on your end, how publish works, like on the uh, Obsidian side, because there yeah. you show which folders that you select, I'm sure. Yeah, so the stuff I keep private is, um, here, I, I can show you the, like, it's it's in, if you look at the structure note, this note on the vault, like, I, I tell you what's in all the files, right? Like, but I don't feel comfortable sharing other people's notes to me about my stories, like that, feels rude. So I tried very hard to remove anything that was like a raw dump of a conversation I had with someone on Discord about something that mm -hmm. like I have notes about that, but it, it it like felt rude to put those private conversations on the internet for money. <laughs> um, and I also uh, like I removed um, my daily notes because there's a lot of stuff about like, I'm grateful for how wonderful my son and husband were or like, you know, reflections on my health that just didn't feel appropriate for the internet but I um I, uh when Koala was going through he was actually like did you mean to include these like notes about how you plan to fix your website and I was like oh no that's just like task management stuff people had questions about that I'm fine to share that so there's still a bunch of stuff <laughs> um that is like like it's definitely a working vault I just removed things like my son's social security card pictures and like proprietary pdfs that I downloaded legally from JSTOR but I don't have the rights to reprint and things like that so it is, it is as close to a like working vault as I feel legally like able to give you guys. I just moved, I moved the stuff that would have been like unethical. Yeah. yeah. No, no I, I, I'm very excited for that, especially to kind of dive a little bit deeper into on the left, the Johnny decimal system. Um, that's pretty cool too. I, I, I see in the folder, in the file explorer, you have that vertical line, you know, the indent vertical line. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's just part of your theme. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. It's the cool. relationship lines thing. Hmm. I like that. Might it's, have to do something. It's nice. That. Um, I, they're different colors, by the way. Yeah. RGB you can dark. hover, you can hover. So you can tell like which specific, oh, nice. like if you have them open, see how one's purple and one's yeah. green. It's there's some nice stuff you can do with CSS. Yeah, I'm a big fan of vertical bright lines, so I'm definitely going to try to incorporate that. Well, uh, I tried to break stuff out into snippets and like the Palestinian, like half the reason I published Palestinian in the first place was to make it easier for me to share stuff. Like that, that's the reason I made the roundup too, is because I would read something and be like, mm, somebody's going to ask me this later and I'm not going to have this link handy. So now I can just send them to the like, oh, I think I mentioned that in last week's roundup. You should go look if I'm like on the flyer on my phone or something. Because like, yes. I'll, you know, I'll walk the neighborhood with my son and I'm pushing him in the stroller. And like, I don't feel guilty being on my phone when I'm pushing him in the stroller when he's half asleep. So I'll like try to answer a couple questions. But you know, you know it's what's funny? The phone. <laughs> yeah, because of your roundup, I, um, something that emerged in my PKM system is a more robust way to track plugins which is about time. But now because of your roundup, I'm like, oh, file tree alternative. I will try this out at a later time. And I can just put it there and feel good about that. Because I mean, there's map edit, quick add, 
meta edit. I mean, there are so many extremely powerful apps. Uh, I have one of those too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, and what's fun, okay, something that I just think is, is wild and fun about Markdown is right now we can just go ahead and like find that file. We can share it. We can share it with everyone on this call and just boom, like put it into the chat, a Markdown file. Um, I actually will do that if that's okay with my Obsidian plugins that I'm keeping track of, which don't go for me, go to me for plugins because I'm always <laughs> like two steps, two, have, two, two steps behind. You're very busy um, teaching people how to use them. I get to just mess around with them. But for fun, that's just kind of how I'm thinking about things. So just share that in the, in the chat. And everyone here who's using Obsidian can just quickly open that up or use a different tool if they don't want it opened in their vault. So we're getting a little tight on time. I wouldn't be surprised if we go just a tiny bit over, but we'll try to keep it fairly, fairly tight. So there was a, a juicy question by uh, Joel. One of the things I struggle with is that if I have a note title that's a commonly used word I use a lot, like MOC or China, then outgoing links find connections to too many notes. Any ideas on how to make it clear that a single word is a standalone note, something like Babylon, for instance? Okay, so around that? There, was, there was a lot there. Let me open up. Which one of these is new, new pain? Control enter, okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm still terrible with hotkeys, but I have gotten a lot better than when I started out. All right, so the question was how to like differentiate between like when you're using the same word a lot. Yes, especially when that same word is a standalone title like you have on screen with China and Babylon. Okay, so um, what I tend to do for this is just own it. Uh, like I don't, maybe I'm, hang on. Get, here, let me paste that like, in the chat. Yeah, like, can you can you show me the chat? Or, the or question. even better. Like, I'm, um, I'm so much better Joel, with reading. It's in the chat now, but Joel, would you also, if you'd like to, maybe you can add some. Sure. So yeah, hi, Eleanor. Thanks so much for all you're doing. It's fantastic. Um, so it's, it's especially with the outgoing links um, pain, right? Because if you look in that, and uh, and you you're on China, or you know you get, or you're somewhere else, and you um, you have a you have a text that has China in it, then you're getting like all these all these links to every place where the word China comes up. And I saw you also had MOC, but that comes up all over the place. So I think for me, I sometimes struggle with being able to take advantage of outgoing links in particular with a word like that that comes up so frequently. So the I guess kind of one of the reasons that I have a note for that word is because they're almost always my maps of content. I Nick is going to have to correct me if I completely like misbrand his system because I stole shamelessly and then did not apply it with fidelity. But my um, most of mine are like very kind of indexy encyclopedic things, and their their purpose isn't really to look at the outgoing links. Like I, I just never look at that for a file like that. I don't. Um, I don't care about it except for the graph view, because then I can see how often I'm looking at different things. Um, like it kind of makes like it'll make China really big, and I'm like, oh right, okay. Like I've I've done a lot with China. Maybe I should like, hmm. I could I could maybe write an article about everything I know about China. Like it's. But you I don't, don't flag it in the, the title. That, yeah, you don't yeah. flag it in the title as MOC Babylon. You just keep the mm -hmm. word there. Yeah. Okay. You can, so uh, there's a workflow that I posted on the forums. I don't know if the workflow is the right word, but uh, my, my system is very based on the length of the title. So um, if you noticed, some of these are very like short and almost all of the short ones are more like what Nick would call an MOC. Although I, I think mine are a lot more structured than Nick thinks is totally appropriate for an MOC. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> But, uh, so I, I, it's kind of why I called them indexes for a long time, but I, I recently, this is what I meant about making my, my slip box flatter. I recently merged all of my um, topic notes just into the, mixed in with the Zettles because I started noticing that I was having like an MOC that referenced another MOC that referenced another MOC, which I think is the point um, of all of the network thought. And it just got to be like, kind of messy where this is a this is a top level thing for this thing that's also kind of a top level thing for this thing like with domestication and then domestication of animals and then animals 
Uh, so I kind of just shoved it all into a box and stopped worrying about it, which like, I know they told me to do like six months ago, but I didn't want to until I was ready for it, but now I'm ready for it. And the, the naming schema of a lot of stuff is that things start out not very atomic and then they become more and more atomic. So I'll start with China and then there's these, these um, notes that reference things for it. And they become sort of more and more narrowly focused as I go. But I can do you then delete tell... the single word. You did de delete the single word uh, note at the end. No, you don't clean that up. No, I, the, the single word note is kind of the whole point. It's everything that I have to say about China in one spot. Does that make, I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. No, 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 I think, <laughs> I think, um, no, it makes a lot of sense. And so by refactoring it, you're always keeping it tied back to that, that one word. I was just wondering whether or not you wanted to flag those topic notes in a certain way so that when you're seeing the links, you notice, oh, that's not just a regular occurrence, the word that's, that's tying it to uh, an actual topic note. Oh, right. I just don't link things where I don't, like, if you look at the um, backlinks, a lot of them aren't linked that I, I try to be clean about only linking with intentionality. So like if it's in my backlinks, it's because it's like a thing where I want to know that it's relevant for, as opposed to, because the part of the problem, problem, part of the thing is that a lot of the story stuff that I write will, like I'll have an entire like long form story that includes things like silk and horses and and I don't want those words to get linked to my topic notes because that's not my like personal knowledge management part of my vault. I, I'm blurry on terminology. Nick is way better at that than I am. But like there's there's the whole reason I use folders is because some of the stuff is like fiction and some of it is like the science of sheep. And I don't necessarily need my fiction, but sometimes I do. So I link when I actually want that connection to be there so I can remember to follow up. But it's kind of a messy system that works for me and is not always obvious to other situations and use cases. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. You have intentionality with your, your links and um, yeah, the, the folders are, are quite good too. How are we doing? So I wanna make sure to respect everyone's time. And because we start a few minutes after the hour mark, I think we can go a few minutes after the next hour mark. Could you explain as a too long didn't read the Johnny Decimal System? The Johnny Decimal System is a way of organizing all of your files um, in no more than like two levels deep. Is that the right way? So like folders and then subfolders. Um, basically using buckets that are clearly defined. The whole point is that you're never in a situation where you don't know where the file goes. It was originally designed for like big complex businesses and schools so that employees would know where to file something. And it wasn't like, I don't know how many of you guys have ever used a shared like um, in, in, intranet, but like at my work, there's like 17,000 folders and they're like seven piles nested and like everyone was in charge of a different thing and nobody knows where anything goes. The point of the Johnny Decimal System is to apply some order to that. Um, so that it is always extremely obvious where something lives. And one of the reasons I refractor every couple of months, if you look at, um, if you look at this compared to this, you'll see that I changed stuff around is because if there was ever a moment, it's the reason I flattened my vault. If there's ever a moment where you're not sure which folder something should go in, you should change your folders. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's a good shorthand for the Johnny Decimal. Yeah, um, it, it should be also... very personal. It should be very like what you're doing with your vault. I don't recommend doing it by topic unless you are very, very, very balkanized in your topics. Like you want to, there, it should never be, well, is is physics science or math? Like, mm, don't just, just call it academia or something. <laughs> you know, that, that's a really good point and ties into a different question out there. So it's, you know, there's no one... Uh, way to structure Johnny Decimal and probably the best way is to make it as personal as possible. Okay. Yeah. Like a lot but of people any... look at my vault and go, wait, 
why do you have all of your personal stuff in one folder? Like that would normally, like, like the, all of the stuff in, in a file cabinet, in, in fact, my file cabinet um, would normally be your top level stuff. But this isn't, this isn't the folders that I'm messing with on a daily basis. They're just, they're like archives, right? So yeah. instinctively those buckets, sometimes people will use first, but if that's what you're doing in your vault, then absolutely. It's just about making it easy to access the things that you are using often. Yeah, let's keep this conversation going. The very top one, meta. So, okay, that's going to, I don't know, maybe be, let me just speculate a little bit here. That might be about knowledge management. The next one dated, it's a very obvious, it's chronological. Next, the next one's personal. Next one's interests. Oh, wow, that's going to be huge for Eleanor. Um, and then we have the slip box where we're getting all the Zettles captured. Now it gets into very specific things. World building, that's not going to be on everybody's um, Johnny Decimal system. Newsletters, well, it depends. Are you someone creating some sort of content? Well, maybe you have that. Stories. And then articles. Articles are kind of uh, your sources, or are they your articles? I missed These are the one. ones that I wrote. So um, gotcha. Ask Historians, our, the answer is, is not like really an article. I, I, I could just as easily have the product, but then is a product a story? Like, I don't know. I, I know what it means, so it works for me. Articles are everything that's not a newsletter, not a story, and is like a public facing product. So my Reddit answers go here. This is kind of like a meta folder for it, but whatever. And then I list, uh, I only list the published things that I'm linking to. Like I have published more than this um, on my blog, but every now and then I'll want to like reference one of my published articles and have it show up on the graph. So um, I link to where it is like in the wild, but I also like to annotate sometimes. This is a bad example, but, but sometimes I'll refer to like a specific heading because these are in their own way atomic notes. So very cool. Um, I'm just curious in the chat, what would be some other folders that you might work that you might use in your world, in your situation? I mean, we're seeing what Eleanor is using. We understand her use cases, very broad, but what might you use? I don't know. Finances, that's probably under personal, if I had to guess, some sort of a financial thing. Taxes, yeah. there you have it. Legal taxes, um, usually they're somewhere. There. My husband handles most of the finances, so <laughs> I don't have a lot of like, teamwork. it's mostly my email. I don't, I don't have a lot of like paper stuff for that, so that's why it's um, not a folder. Just a quick one. Um, okay, we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes, but wait, you have a job separate from all this? Oh yeah, uh, so like not right now. Um, <laughs> my my day job is teaching. Uh, like I'm a I'm a middle school teacher, hoping to transition to to high school teacher next year. But um, currently I'm on I'm home um, with my 18 month old son. So I've I've been I'm a homemaker, uh, stay at home mom, I guess. But uh, I don't know. I I've known a lot of people who got stuck home during the pandemic and kind of went crazy with their kids because they couldn't do anything and they missed their jobs and like it's it's hard to not have any intellectual stimulation when your only conversation partner for eight hours a day is a toddler um so this is what i do when he's napping and in the evenings when my husband comes home i like try to stay interesting and like intellectually yeah. stimulated with academic I, I stuff because i, 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 I teach I think that you're, you're not alone there eleanor i think that's a huge huge thing is um you know and i, I don't have children but i have a lot of nieces and nephews, but just overall the idea of um, that you have to keep sanity uh, when you're, you know, um, I think, you know, there, there's that quote, and I'm not going to say it in completion, but, but um, there are pe some people talk about people, some people talk about events, and some people talk about ideas. And it's kind of tilted towards ideas when we have that quote. But I will say this, we should have all three, we should have all three in our lives. And if we're missing one of those, we're not going to be, I don't know, feeling so complete. So, you know, what's missing from that? And when, when I say talk about people, I, I think that quote, which kind of disparages that, like small minds talking about people, we're not saying gossip, we're, we're, it's caring, you know, understanding, you know, other people in, in the world, society. So uh, I think that can kind of get a bad rap, but do we have all three? Because if we don't, um, maybe there's something bad with that, but that's where you have so much intellectual stimulation, even being at home right now. And, and same with my situation, it's just, uh, this community, this community is so special. This this broad uh, personal knowledge management space that we happen to kind of fall into, it's, it's quite, quite amazing. Something special is happening, I must say. Yeah, like I've always, you know, like a bunch of these books that I have are Christmas presents from, you know, before I found Obsidian. Like, it's not like I've never read academic textbooks before, but I've never been able to like process and use them so well. And like one, I do think it's gonna make me a better teacher because I know 
I, I usually teach um, ancient civilizations and world history. So it's not like this is unrelated to my day job. Um, but uh, just just finding a way to keep track of all of this has like I know people are like, oh, isn't that just like, you know, you're just you're just doing it for the sake of doing it. like, no, I, I can I can tangibly point to metrics. This has made me substantially more productive in ways I, I value deeply. I'm writing more. Um, I'm I'm doing so much more like conversation like my newsletters. Um, I started writing them the because I was doing research for my book and I was having conversations about it with friends and family and I wanted to have a way to record it like I started the newsletter um long before I found Obsidian because it was my way of keeping track of my notes every week and what I had been researching and it'll come up in conversation um I had one about scurvy because I was looking into um the dietary practices of one of the fictional people in my fantasy world and it came up in conversation over and over and over again. Somebody would talk about, you know, meat-based diets or how they were eating a bunch of protein. I'd be like, oh, did you know that, you know, the maximum amount of protein that you can have in your diet, like pure protein is 30%? And like, oh, like, did you know that the, the Inuit people, like, it just kept coming up. Did you know that the the British, when they were figuring out that limes or, uh, that limes and lemons can, can stop scurvy, like there's so much interesting political stuff about, like it just kept coming up. And now part of the reason that I moved it over to Ghost is because it's I, like with Mailer Light, where I used to have my newsletter, I couldn't get to the PDF to share it with people when I was talking about it. It just kept coming up these things that I had researched, yeah. and I just I just want to share it. Like I, I'm a teacher, right? Like I'm a teacher, and I I have things that I think that are interesting. They come up in conversation. People seem to like talking to me. Um, <laughs> so like I have friends, <laughs> so I wanted to be able to more easily link people to this reference that I had. Like oh man, like I found this article. You have to read it. Not in a like a like just share a link what kind of way, but like here's some thoughts about this thing that's mm -hmm. relevant to our conversation. And it just made it so much easier to talk to people yeah. about things that we all cared about. I think, well, you know, um, th there's something there about triangulation, uh, going back to there's a thing, there's like a topic, a concept out there. And then there's the person that you kind of enjoy talking about the thing because it gives you perspective. And then you're over here. And if you have those two dots and there's you, then you really kind of understand what's happening. And uh, that's, I don't know, it's kind of a cool thing. So you're definitely um, a valued and treasured triangulation voice, so to speak. And uh, we look to Eleanor to kind of get your thoughts on anything from chestnuts to scurvy. I just want to give you a huge round of applause. Let's do both a physical and a virtual round of applause for Eleanor. Woo! You guys are great by the way, like I love this community. I would not put this kind of time into newsletters for people that I didn't like. <laughs> yeah. It's, I get it's, so many uh, nice emails about like, yeah. you know, helping people. Cause so many different, like no, nobody has time to keep up with the discord unless you read as fast as I do. And like, <laughs> I, I read really fast. Um, I read I, I read a textbook like this, a, a paper physical textbook and took notes on it in one weekend because it was due back at the library. <laughs> That's the, um, you guys have my notes now. Civilizations of Africa, um, 1800, or you know, way far back to 1800. That was a physical textbook that I got from interlibrary loan and took notes on post-its and physically typed it up in one weekend. <laughs> Could have never done that before Obsidian and the like whole heading method. It, it, I, I use those notes all the time. I'm so yeah, glad that I have to share great. my okay. notes with you guys. I can like actually reference stuff and you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm just resharing your newsletter link. Um, we've shared the, the published link a lot, uh, which I'm, I have to sink my teeth into as well. I'm trying to think other reminders before we get everyone on back to their Sundays. Uh, I mean, uh, the I'm, recording, where will- I'm pretty responsive if you have other questions. I'm like, I'm around. <laughs> yes. You definitely. Oh, so there's active. um. I turned on. I turned on comments for the blog. Uh, it's a new feature for Ghost, so if it breaks, let me know. Mm -hmm. But um, I thought it might be nice for you guys to like actually target questions in one one place instead of the fire hose of Discord. So use them if if you're interested in that. Uh, I promise to be as responsive there as I am everywhere else. It feels weird to say it like that, but I don't know. I feel like I have a pretty good response rate. I I I answer people. <laughs> So th this is pretty great. The next Lighthouse session, well, I know we'll definitely have Ryan J.A. Murphy, uh, another moderator in the Obsidian forums, and he's oh, going nice. to be talking, well, hopefully, about integrated thinking environments and, and how Obsidian fits that and with all the plugins. Um, very, you know, 
very insightful person. So I'm ex excited to have him. I know somewhere down the road, I don't know how soon, but uh, the Max, Max Barkey will be another Lighthouse session. I'm not sure if it's going to be in the next few weeks or if it'll just be before the end of the year, but it'll be nice to have David. And there are a couple other people lined up. So whether or not um, they'll be in the next two to four weeks, which is like this jam-packed time, there'll be also a lot of other Sunday live sessions, but you'll hear more about that. I don't want to talk too much about it now. Um, I just want to thank you for how responsive you've remained, uh, where I've kind of had to take a back seat at, seat at times. Um, but last, lastly, let's just thank everyone who showed up. Um, I think we we're over, I think we got to about 110. And even though we're 15 minutes over, we still have, you know, 60 plus. So pretty fun there. Thank you for your time, your patience, and just being here, your questions, your leaning forward attitude. And uh, yeah, let's just keep doing our things together and find great ways to fall into each other's orbits. Uh, thanks for like having me. Also, I don't know if you guys know this, but Nick taught me everything I know about personal knowledge management. Like I had never heard of all of the people think of as greats before I found Obsidian. Like I came in because somebody from my writing community was like, hey, you could use this to manage your world building. Like Nick taught me everything I know, except for all of the stuff that I already knew. <laughs> well, I, I think what's fun about, uh, you know, both, both you and I is we just kind of like walked, we're at a big party and we just kind of walked backwards into a room and then people started like enjoying things that we were saying, but you know, it just kind of happened organically. And, and that's what I like about everyone here is it's just this organic, very natural thing happening and hopefully it continues.